All right, my name is Rich Schmidt. I'm here with Eunice Chueshe Goldstein. It's, uh, it's August 13, 2019. We're in Portland. And Eunice, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And I'm delighted to be here with you guys and grateful. So let's start today by asking, uh, why wine? Um, wine, because it brings people together and um, there's a purpose behind it. Um, with each bottle that we sell at our winery, 10% goes to a charity of our choice. Uh, growing up, my grandmother always had people at the farm and she helped everyone that she could help. So um, this was a way for me to give back. And on top of that, being a UCLA film Bruin, Francis Ford Coppola and his winery uh, was also a big influence on me. So yeah. That is the reason behind the wine. So what point did you get interested in wine? What part? What, what, at what time, like what point did you get, like did be, wine become a thing you could do as a, as a career? Um, or? it became evident. I was actually um, at UCLA mm -hmm. and Vitaro Storaro, who is Francis Ford Coppola's um, director of photography, we were having a conversation and a few other people and um, they were like, you know, um, since you love wine so much, because I kept on saying, well, Francis Ford Coppola kind of has shown that you can do both film and wine. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, you know, um, there's always room for someone like you in the wine industry, and you would be the first to kind of break ground, especially in an area like Oregon. So with that being said, I decided that I should pursue it. I was on set of, um, I can't remember what TV show it was, but I want to say it was might have been Westworld or whichever show I was working on at the time and I happened to go online. There were land, pieces of land for sale in uh, Oregon. Mm -hmm. So I came across this piece of land in Tillamook and from there I was like, okay, this is actually really happening. So I put in um, a bid for the piece of the land and uh, from there I was like, um, I will start applying for my licenses mm -hmm. and went through the process of applying through the state and the federal government and uh, with each step I just felt get, like I was getting closer and closer and it was becoming a reality mm -hmm. so yeah and eventually here we are <laughs> sitting and I'm actually talking to you about it so yeah <laughs> Why Oregon? Why was Oregon the place you wanted to be? So Oregon is the only state that, besides Washington, that allows you to hold both the, um, the distribution and uh, the production license. So I want to do, utilize both. And I know it's like, you know, it's, it's a path and it's a journey. It's never like a sprinting race. It's a marathon. So I figured, why just not go to a state that will allow me to develop both of those aspects. So tell us a little bit about your background before wine. You mentioned UCLA. Tell me about getting interested in film and, and some of the things you've done along your sort of pre-wine career. Pre-wine career. Or, side, or, <laughs> or, next, or next parallel to wine yeah. career. Yeah. Um, so I remember I was a little girl in Zimbabwe. I used to play with my cousins and we would, you know, kick up dirt for special effects. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember thinking to myself, I really want to make movies. I've always wanted to make movies. And I think even as a five-year-old, you're thinking to yourself, well, you're in Zimbabwe in the middle of nowhere. How are you going to get to Hollywood and make movies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I just, deep down in my heart, I think I knew right away. And it was random because my parents walked in one day and they said, you know what? Guess what, guys? We're moving to America. And from there, I was like, whoa, I'm getting closer and closer to each step. So um, then the next thing you know, I was applying to UCLA Film School. I got in, and that was like confirmation enough um, that this is definitely the path that I'm destined to be in. Um, and then from there, graduating, you know, working for Ridley Scott's production company, and then just a whole bunch of other directors and producers along the way um, really showed me a lot. And, um, and now, yeah, I'm making both films and wine. So <laughs> that's something I'm really grateful and it's a blessing. So.
You mentioned wanting to make movies from a young age. Were you thinking uh, front of the camera, behind the camera, both? Did, at, both. What point, at what point did, so it was both it all was, along? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, growing up it was both for me. Um, I just, I always wanted to be both in front of the camera and behind the camera. Um, whether it was directing or writing or acting. I used to write my parents' poems all the time. That's how <laughs> my writing started. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so that pretty much is what brought me to acting, I guess, directing and writing. So as you're getting out of film school, you mentioned you started kind of getting rolling with Ridley Scott's production company and things like that. How did you start making those connections and what were some of the early things that you were excited to do? Um, how did I start making some of those connections? I think I just hit the ground running. Um, and then also UCLA has a really supportive network um, in terms of, you know, just keeping it as kind of like a Bruin UCLA family, they <laughs> will, you know, push us in whichever direction, whether it's screenwriting or directing, and they'll get us with the right advisors. And then obviously it's a family network. And then from there, you just continue to grow mm -hmm. um, in that aspect. <laughs> Go ahead. What were some of the early roles you had or some of the early kind of breakthroughs for you that made you feel like this is something you could do for a career? Um, the early breakthroughs, I would say getting, so there's um, getting like, you know, different roles, whether it was assisting people that I looked up to um, in various aspects, whether it was on or off set, you know, being their assistant in personal life or on set. Um, and then just, I started, I guess, acting too whenever I would be like wanting to just for me I feel like it's important to act right and direct so mm -hmm. sometimes I do need to just step back and just watch whether it's from watching someone like Denzel do a scene um, I watched Denzel and Colin Farrell actually do a scene which was really good for me and I could observe and learn from them just by watching um, and that's from being behind the camera. Mm -hmm. And then from being in front of the camera, I did like Kevin Hart's Guide to Black History, which just being surrounded by people like that, at, you know, they're just at such a different you know, stage in their life and have worked hard to get to that point. So um, I think, I feel like I absorb these aspects, whether it's in front or behind, but it's, I feel like they're all equally important for me. Uh, as I'm growing as a as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have a favorite project you've done so far, either either side of the camera, something that you're really proud of? Yeah, I would have to say the Kevin Hart project. Mm -hmm. um, Westworld was really cool because Tandy Newton happens to be Zimbabwean British, so just getting like personal time with her and just getting guidance or advice. Um, and then my short film, Namo, which uh, will be a feature film, and that I shot right in, uh, at the border of Zimbabwe, South Africa. So that's, that was a really powerful piece for me, and I'm excited um, for that one. And then another one close to my heart is uh, the Flint, Michigan water crisis mm -hmm. documentary, which has been in the works for quite some time. And then this new show called The Fun Skis that uh, we're developing, which is about these two uh, flamingos that it's their journey and as they fall in love so yeah awesome a, nice, a wide variety of things that's pretty, right. that's pretty, pretty exciting yeah yeah so we talked you talked earlier about some of the, the money you make in wine and other things going back into the various charitable causes so tell me about the kind of origin of why you want to give back and what some of the causes are that you're interested in okay yeah so our whole mission is purpose wine and uh, the reason for for donating to all these various organizations is just my grandma and my parents have instilled a great deal about um, helping others and you know if you stand on my shoulders or if I stand on your shoulders is what my mom says we can go further we can actually see further so some of the organizations that I feel um, were very important to contribute to and be a part of were uh, the Brian Grant Foundation and they um, advocate their advocates for the Parkinson's disease and then the Cedar Hills kindergarten class um, 
Another one that we're getting ready to support is the Fringe Fashion Show, and they seem to be very encompassing of everybody, um, whether you know, if it's somebody who's handicapped, for them to be able to walk down the runway um, is really, really, um, I think, a good thing for people to be able to see various aspects of people um, mm -hmm. in positions that might not be traditionally expected. Like for example, for me, being a African-American female and you know, directing or being a winery owner, I think just things like that are really important for our society to see and they're groundbreaking because other little girls, wherever they are, are gonna be inspired to do something and make a difference. So I'm curious, you, film industry and wine industry don't seem immediately like they would be have a lot of similarities, but do you see some crossover in your work in wine and, and, and in acting, directing? Yeah, I think, um, I feel like with, with both film and wine to me, it's like, it's like these dreams that I feel like I've had. And then, you know, it's with every dream that you have, you know, you, you put everything you can or do everything you can to see it come to life. Um, I think that goes the same whether it's wine or a movie. Um, obviously you're hitting the ground running in every aspect. There's never a training manual that you can revert to in any situation but um, I think just putting your heart into both or you know either one is something that I feel like crosses over. I feel like it's important. Do you feel like you're doing a bit of storytelling on, on both sides as well? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I think it was a day that I had to pinch myself and tell myself like, okay, what are the chances? Like this is all happening. I could have been in a village somewhere, not here with you fine people. <laughs> and, but it's, it's really happening and that's why I feel like it's so important for me to be able to, um, to give back because I know what it's like to be on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you mentioned sort of the, the, the land in Tillamook that you found. Tell me about the process there and, and what, the, what, the, what it's been like sort of making Oregon wine and then what the, what the next step is for what you're doing here. Yeah, um, you know, obviously finding a piece of land, you, you, you know, you get excited and you're like, okay, this is it. And then you start going through the process of um, whether it's getting the certifications, getting, you know, them to come in and look at it and give you an A-OK -okay, or you go through those steps, which sometimes can be arduous, but I think the, <laughs> the biggest thing is, you know, not giving up and um, uh, having someone who's also there, supportive. Um, my boyfriend is really, really great about that. <laughs> and my parents and my brothers are so instrumental in um, each day of my life, so. So what's coming up next then? I know that eventually I think the idea is to have the winer, a winery or a tasting room in Astoria, is that correct? Right. So, so tell me about the kind of process for that and when we're going to be able to walk to, in and buy Eunice's wine here in Oregon. Well, the best, the best part is that with my schedule being so crazy right now, online has seemed to be my best friend and doing events are also my best friend. But um, <laughs> being with the way my schedule is right now and wanting to focus more on films, I am thinking probably hopefully in 2020, I'll feel a little better about schedule wise and having, I'm hoping that in 2020, um, as I was saying, uh, online and obviously having my wine in different stores um, across the town has been my best friend at the moment. And um, I'm looking at probably 2020 is when the doors will open and we'll be there a little more than right now. It's just like I was saying, scheduling has been kind of you know tough. So I want to be able to be in there and then, you know, take it a little bit of time to film and then come back, um, probably have someone also help on ground. That way I can manage both the film and the winery. Time-wise, that is. There's not <laughs> enough hours in a day. <laughs> sure, sure. So you have, a, you have a very unique name, and we know that your winery is named after you as well, but not entirely after you. So tell us about your, about your name and, and why you chose to give the winery the name it has. Yeah, so I chose to, my grandma's name obviously is Eunice, which means uh, good victory. I just, she's instilled a lot in me. Um, and I know that I wanted her name to live on in other ways. So this, it's, it's, 
definitely um, it epitomizes everything that she was, which is to have this purpose and this mission to um, bring people together. And I just didn't want to focus on maybe just one or two organizations. I just want to leave it open because all these organizations, whether it's animals, our environment, um, you know, we all kind of are connected. We are connected and we all come together as one. Because at the end of the day, we can't take any of this stuff with us. It's basically what we're going to do to come together and um, help each other as as beings on this planet, <laughs> along with the other species, so. I like that, that's a good answer, I like that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so tell me about the kind of wines you're making up here, and you know, I know you have a couple unique uh, items as well, so tell us about what you how you decided what to make, and some, yeah. of the, some of the kind of special things you're doing. Okay, so yeah, we have everything from the Pinot Noir, which people love the most, it's a uh, um, uh, 2017 Pinot Noir, which is right here and Willamette Valley grapes. Um, and then the other one is the Rosé, which is also here, and it's 2017. And then we have a Champagne, which was also a Blanc de Blanc disgorged uh, in 2018. I believe it was November 8th of 2018. Um, yeah, so those are the big ones. And then the chocolate covered wine bottle, which is yeah, tell us basically about that. <laughs> it's for the lovers and <laughs> it's um well anybody obviously <laughs> your birthday, your grandma, your grandpa. It's a chocolate covered wine bottle. So it's just chocolate, dark chocolate on the outside and then red wine and you just break it apart, drink your wine and enjoy it with your loved ones. Tell me about the reactions you get to when people see that for the first time. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> chocolate and wine, I mean, they go hand in hand. Um, I mean, they're both good for your health, high in antioxidants, so why not pair the two? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any plans for the future? Uh, you talked about once you have a kind of a, a, an actual space that you're uh, having open all the time. Do you have ex plans for expansion, other types of wine? Or are you just going to kind of keep it with what you have now? Yeah, definitely want to expand more. And um, like I said, obviously it's a it's a marathon more than like a sprinting race. I definitely want to keep expanding um, into other into other wines mm -hmm. uh, across the board. So I even thought about my grandparents' farm in Zimbabwe considering probably growing um, at some point there. So um, include Zimbabwean wines wow. while I'm at it. Um, cause we don't really bring in any Zimbabwean wines. South African wines, maybe a couple here mm -hmm. and there, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking that would be another aspect. And then obviously continuing to grow um, here in Oregon because I do really like Oregon quite a bit so and there's a lot of trees it's green it's lush the people are amazing <laughs> those little things those little things yeah so yeah those are the important parts and continuing to make movies um, you know it's funny this this show called the Funskies which are two little flamingos which at some point I'll send you guys a clip but they're just it's funny, they're inanimate objects in a real world, and um, I feel like it's just room to explore different aspects. So I kinda, I'm excited to see that grow, movies, scripts, and, and more and more wine, and helping more and more organizations, so. Ambitious. Yeah. Ambitious. <laughs> tell, tell me, you mentioned earlier, not enough hours in the day. Tell me about balancing this now and how that's working for you. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's balancing. Like, I, I would have to say um, my parents have instilled in us that, you know, no matter what, you know, the sky's the limit. You can do anything. Um, so watching my brothers, I have one brother who's a PhD economist and he's running around and has taught me just watching him and my sister-in-law and my little nephew manage their life is like one aspect. And then my other brother, he's a surgeon in Orange County <laughs> and just watching him having managed his time and trying to juggle residency and then now being in the real world working. And then our baby brother who's at Sony Pictures studying to be a lawyer, wants to be a producer too in the film industry. It's just, we've all kind of like learned from each other that no matter what, if you feel like you have no time in the day, just dig deep in your heart somewhere in there, you will find it, so. Kind of an overachieving family you got. 
<laughs> oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah, they, my parents, they're really, really amazing, amazing people. And it's probably one of the main reasons that no matter what we do, we're just like, you know, we want to make it a point that we give back to them all the love that they've put in us. So. So what was the rest of the family's reaction about to, to wine? Was wine something they were excited there for was, you to do? There was, so to this day, there's not a day that my, my, I'll be on the phone with my dad and he's like, so, <laughs> my friends are asking, <laughs> they want some bottles. Yeah, they're, they're really, really supportive. Um, that was the, the best part was that like, they're just amazingly supportive about all of it all, um, no matter what it is that we decide that we're gonna do. Um, but yeah, grateful for that. So. so as far as we can tell, you're the first African-American female winery owner here in Oregon. So, and you mentioned wow. earlier, you kind of being uh, a, couple, a couple of places that you wouldn't necessarily find an African-American woman typically wine owning, directing. Tell me a little bit about what it means to you to be an African-American female in the wine industry and, and, and sort of how it is for you to, to be part of the industry, how you, how you feel as a part of the industry. Yeah. Um, like I said before, I have to pinch myself sometimes because my life could have been completely different. I'm utterly from the bottom of my heart grateful because I know that there's probably a little girl out there somewhere who's, you know, who's got the same goals and dreams and they're sitting there going, how can I get to this point? And I just want to say, whoever you are out there, it's a possibility and just keep dreaming. Um, it will happen because it happened to me. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say um, having other women, whether around the world, if it's in Zimbabwe, South Africa, wherever, the Middle East, you know, wherever, or I mean, Europe, wherever it may be, you know, it's just Asia. I know that, you know, wherever people are, they're always like, how do I get there? Everybody wants to come to America. It's the land of milk and honey, right? So. It's a possibility. Um, somehow the stars aligned, you know, and I can't even express it. <laughs> so I, other than the word that just comes to mind is that being grateful um, is the biggest thing for me. So as you become sort of more a part of the industry, as you grow, as you have a as you have a brick and mortar place here in Oregon, what do you kind of hope to bring to the Oregon wine industry? What is it? What is it that you will add to it uh, as as Eunice? Um, yeah, the one thing is I definitely want to bring you know a lot of love. Um, wine made with love is you know the quote that. Um, we stand by, which is no matter what we do and everything that we do, whether it's making films or making wine, just being a loving person. Um, and I'm hoping to bring diversity, like you mentioned, Stephanie, who is really, really amazing. I, I love her. She's so cool. Um, yes, she is. Just even sitting down and talking about the diversity committee and, you know, helping kind of having this, you know, blanket for those that might not know that the support is there um, it's really really important mm -hmm. to me so and do you feel like the support has been there for you from the industry itself as oh, you oh yeah I will have to say yes because everyone that I've encountered in the wine industry has been helpful mm -hmm. at least wanting to at least show me like you know, if I have any questions or in understanding anything. I mean, of course, not everything is always going to be rosy. You might encounter one or two people, but what's a pebble, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. yeah. So getting back to f filmmaking, but just for a moment here, I'm curious if you have like a, if you have a, what you consider a filmmaking philosophy or what it is you're trying to, to get with your work. And if it's similar to what you're doing with wine, do you have like a kind of an overarching philosophy or do you find them to be a little bit different? My philosophy for film and wine, I, I'm finding them to be similar. Mm -hmm. Like I, I realize that with every project that I work on, it has to, you know, speak volumes um, in terms of, you know, making a difference to me. I think making a difference in whatever way I can um, is important to me, whether it's film or or the wine industry. So it's almost like if people are gonna drink, they're gonna buy a bottle no matter what, why not drink that wine 
and know that you're helping you know someone go to school or you're helping someone with Parkinson's or you're helping animals or the environment and just making it a better place so um, the purpose wine mission is really key to me and I'm noticing that also with my films I didn't realize it but a lot of them have have that in them you know and whether it's Flint um, mm -hmm. we're right here in America and every time we go there to film I mean I'm with one of my best friends and taking a bottle of water taking a shower that way in a first world country in 2019 to me is just it's not right mm -hmm. and um, it's never should be swept under the rug I feel like these are important issues that our society needs to deal with so as you look ahead to the future for yourself what do you what do you see down the road uh, obviously <laughs> you have a lot on the plate a lot of things a lot of ambitions so do you have any film projects that you've mentioned you're just wrapping one up now do you have anything else kind of coming up that you're excited yeah, about yeah um the flint michigan mm -hmm. documentary we've been working on that for some time mm -hmm. the fun skis uh tv show mm -hmm. and uh lion's den which is also another script that i have um just also on uh, namo i want to probably film that in um in zimbabwe and um i, I feel like every day you know there are many projects that are coming to mind that I want to work on and develop so <laughs> so yeah I think I think just taking it one step at a time another one that I have um, that I want to work on which is rhino uh, horn lion bone and that has to do with like poaching in um, Africa because that's also something that's like depleting a lot of animals I don't know if you guys remember uh, Cecil the lion, he was from Zimbabwe and some, okay, whatever <laughs> you want to call him, he went there and shot mm -hmm. this lion, I mean, which is not really, I don't understand that. No. Yeah. No. So yeah, anything to, I guess, take care of our planet a little better. <clears throat> So as, do you have, is there a goal in mind? Do you have, is, is, it, is it winning awards? Is it being famous? Is there some sort of goal down the line that you would love to have as a, at the end of your film career? Um, <laughs> well, that, that's always the question, isn't it? <laughs> I think so long as, you know, I'm making a difference in my movies, I think that's important to me. Um, obviously, the Academy is always one of those things where you're like, you know it's at the core and deep down you want to make a movie that's that powerful enough to touch people um i always think of hotel rwanda which no one ever knew what was going on in rwanda but because the film was made it helped you know point a light to the fact that a genocide was happening um so yeah that would be that'd be really really cool <laughs> <laughs> What about with your wine? What, are the, what is the kind of goal of Purpose Wine as you, as you look ahead? I just, I want to see it grow more and more and um, be able to help more and more organizations. Um, you know, wine is a very, very strong, powerful, like, industry in our country. I mean, last year alone, I think it was a $70 billion industry. Yeah, so I, why not take a percentage of that and help mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. I think is is key to me mm -hmm. yeah as you look ahead at, at oregon's wine industry now that you're now that you're a part of it what do you see for it as you look ahead uh, it's growing i mean <laughs> i think it went from what was it like small percentage to like now 16 17 percent in a short amount of time something like that yeah yeah so that's that's really amazing um and what better place than a really green lush environment where people are conscious about um you know, taking care of the land, so. That's all the questions that I have for you. Is there anything I should have asked you that I didn't? Anything we should did, should have covered that we didn't? Uh, as being the first African-American um, female to own a winery in Oregon, I would also like to be the first female to win an Oscar in directing, so. Nice. Yeah. We'll, look, we'll look forward to that. That's, that's we can, I think we can all root for that. So. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today for making it making us uh, time for us. I know it's been tough to find a schedule, but oh, I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful because I know our schedule is filming. You know, running. You guys 
I'm grateful for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful. Finding the time. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, watch you off the hook here. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in and supporting the Oregon Wine History Archive. Uh, for more information, go to our website to support uh, uniswinery.com. Thank you again, and have a beautiful day.